What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So, um, before I get into this video, I want to thank all the new people who have signed up to the Patreon. I um, I'm glad that uh, a lot of you like the content up there. There's a lot of videos up there. Uh, I had not over the past month been uploading as much as I had want to, but I, I told you I would be uh, upticking that considerably. And you may notice that I've been uploading very, very uh, frequently over the past week on the Patreon. And I will continue to do so. Um, I will try to upload at least at least 15 videos a month on the Patreon. I try to upload between 15 to 20 uh, original videos on the Patreon as well as, uh, man, I don't know how many videos up there, man. Six, seven hundred videos that's in the archives, so... Shout out to everybody that signed up to the Patreon. Look, yesterday in the community section uh, to promote the Patreon, right, I put up a picture of Kobe Bryant. It's a picture of Kobe Bryant dunking on rookie Dwight Howard. And um, somebody wrote something that just didn't sit with me the right way. Right, They said, oh, you guys... Love to promote Kobe. You guys love to, you know, show pictures of Kobe to promote things, but a lot of you guys don't even have Kobe ranked number seven. And you guys have people like Jordan and Bird and Magic and Kareem ahead of him. The disrespect is ridiculous. First of all, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Disrespect? Because somebody got Michael Jordan ahead of Kobe? Listen to yourself. You're not saying Allen Iverson or Vince Carter or Tracy McGrady or Carmelo Anthony. You're not saying those guys. You're not even saying Elgin Baylor or uh, David Robinson or George Mikan or something like that. You're saying the creme de la creme. It's disgraceful. What you're saying is, because I have Kobe Bryant ranked like number six all time. So you're telling me I'm disrespectful to Kobe because I got five people ahead of him? The fuck are you talking about? And then a lot of times people criticize me for using Michael Jordan too damn much. So let me show love to Kobe Bean. And then I get criticized for that. But let me tell you something. How do you think I feel when I see people tell me why Wilt's not top 10, when I think Wilt's the GOAT, I don't go around crying because people got difference of opinions. Grow the hell up, man. Everybody don't think like you. See, people like you are the result of groupthink. You like to align yourself with people that think the same way as you do, which can make life easier for you, but it also makes you mentally mushy. Because when you don't exercise your brain, when you don't listen to alternative thoughts or, I don't want to say alternative, when you don't listen to different opinions, then you tend to become very, very, uh, over time, you become intolerable. You just grow to think that everything that you believe is the correct way of thinking. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Look, I just want to share about Will Chamber and why I have such an affinity for him. When you see all these guys today who get injured, you know, and, and they miss entire seasons and, or two seasons. And people can't give you excuses. Kawhi Leonard, you know, uh, Joel Embiid missed last Friday with a sore knee. He didn't play Monday for whatever reason. He didn't play uh, yesterday for whatever reason. All right. Will Chamberlain. Early on in the 1969-1970 season suffered a total rupture of his patella tendon 
in his knee. All right? This type of injury in those days was a career ender. They ended careers. As a matter of fact, just 45 years later, Andre Roberson, I believe it was his name, that played with the Thunder, remember him? He never came back after suffering that injury. Now, part of it could be, you know, he didn't have much of a J. Uh, he was just a defensive player. You know, guys like him are dinosaurs. But he missed three years, and he still wasn't ready to come back and play. Jeremy Lin suffered the same injury and missed an entire NBA season and came back, I think, a few games into the next year. Will Chamberlain came back in less than four months from this injury. Four months! Four months. When the Lakers fired Van Bredekoff, the coach that notoriously benched Wilt Chamberlain in Game 7 of the 1969 Finals, the Lakers brought in a guy named Joe Mullaney before the 1969-1970 season. Mullaney immediately went to Wilt Chamberlain who had altered his game at that point and became more of a facilitator, all-around player. <clears throat> but he wanted Wilt to go back to being a scorer, okay? He wanted Wilt to be the focal point of the offense. Wilt responded by averaging over the first nine games of that season over 32 points a game. He scored 33 points. Uh, he had games of 33 points, 35 points, 37, 38 42 and 43. Unfortunately, in the ninth game of that season, Will Chambers suffered a devastating knee injury in a game that he had 33 points at the time of injury on 13 of 13 shooting. <clears throat> Will came back in less than four months, which was superhuman. No one thought that he'd be back that soon. No one. But it was apparent that he had lost a lot of quickness and lateral uh, movement as far as his ability to move laterally side to side. And it affected him so much that <clears throat> he would never be the same score. Yeah, he would have games where he might drop 35 or 40 when motivated properly, but he, he couldn't sustain it like he did before the knee injury. But he, the fact that he was still able to play at a high level for four more years is remarkable. It's remarkable that he was still able to have seasons averaging, you know, 18 points, 19 rebounds, or 20 rebounds, and five or six assists. I mean, you know, those are down numbers for Will Chamberlain. So you have to wonder, <clears throat> A, what would Wilt have averaged had he never suffered that injury? What would his numbers have looked like? And how much longer would he have played had he not suffered that devastating injury? But like I said before, a lot of people don't even have Wilt in the top 10. It was all because he didn't win more than two championships. But that's the Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith effect. But they'll tell you Kawhi Leonard's a top 20 player. 